Welcome to the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries. On behalf of our Elder Shadrach and the Supreme Council at Toronto, Canada, we extend special greetings in the name of our Father, the God of our forefathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the only God of truth according to the Bible. My name is Michael Hines, and with me is Avery and Donna McNeil. This broadcast comes to you directly from Atlanta, Georgia. Our subject today is freedom. And when we talk about freedom, we're talking about the ultimate freedom. To begin, let us take a look at the word free. This word comes from the same root as the words love and friend. These are called passive words, meaning we have to look first for the active principle that is the one who is expressing the concept of freedom, the love and the friendship. Hence, before anyone can honestly claim to be free, that individual must first acknowledge the spirit of truth, the most high God of Israel. In other words, there can be no freedom without truth, and the God of Israel is the almighty spirit of truth. The challenge to humanity is that the spirit of truth is only available to the Israelite nation, and we could prove that from John 14, 15 to 17. The good news is, that the gates of Israel are open to all. John 14 says, John 14, 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that, ye, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Now, the question then is, who is speaking, and to whom? W this is Christ w Jesus, w dot is real and he is speaking Nation to the Israelite com. nation, or to the Israelites. And this is why I said that the Spirit of Truth, who is the Comforter, is only available to Israel. So if one needs to be free, one would have to come first to Israel in order to be enlightened, if you will, by the Comforter or to be assisted by the Comforter and in order to gain freedom. Is there any question, Avery, on, on this matter or any commentary? Or Donna, you can jump in as well if, if, if at any point in time. No, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, I think it starts with the spirit of truth. Um, and for the Israelites, um, that leads to our freedom. Um, the reason I'm asking is because it might seem to some of our listeners that we are being a little bit presumptuous or a little bit um, arrogant by saying this, but we've read the scripture. Uh, Jesus the Christ is saying, if you love me, keep my commandments. So you see that this is why I'm saying that free is passive or freedom is secondary. So it secondary is to truth. Exactly. So the spirit of truth is primary, and from that spirit, or from the spirit of truth, he alone will grant you that freedom. So this is why it is important that we begin first with the first point, so the first principles. And the first principle here is the God of Israel, who is the spirit of truth. Um, it's a very good point, Michael. When I think about freedom, I think about um, you know, blind obedience to the God of Israel. Um, on the other hand, it requires vision. Um, for the scriptures say, where there is no vision, the people perish. And I just want to go back um, just to reflect on, on the garden where Adam had uh, a great opportunity. He was free as long as he obeyed the spirit of truth. But once he disobeyed, once he uh, neglected the spirit of truth, um, sin came and he was in bondage. So you make a very good point. It begins with the spirit of truth. Excellent. Th this you, You've taken me now where I wanted to go, which is straight to the book of Genesis. Because the p same point that I made with regards to the truth first, then freedom, is borne out by Moses and all the prophets from Genesis to, to Malachi. Uh, for example, if we go to Genesis chapter 1, and read from 24 through 27, it says, And God said, Let there be, let the earth bring forth the living creature 
after his kind, cattle and creeping things, and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let it or let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. So here is the fundamental point, that before there was man, there is God. And this is very significant, because if there is any freedom to be had by man, it has to be granted by his creator. It is only natural that this be understood up front, and this is the the gist of everything that I'm trying to say here tonight. Despite all of this evidence, and this is something that has always bothered me, but you know I'm not in control, so there's very little I can do about it uh, from a, on a big scale. But on a small level, as we are doing tonight, I could make my um, my my position known. Despite all of this very specific and precise evidence. The entire world has chosen to disregard the wisdom of the spirit of truth in favor of a world of darkness and confusion. Yet, everybody is claiming freedom. And this is why it is confusion. For example, as silly as this may sound, some people have chosen to ignore the amazing deeds of our Creator, the Most High God of Israel, insisting instead that they have evolved from animals. Now, I'm sure that I'm not the only one that thinks this is crazy, but we have just read where God created man in his image and likeness. So, and, and not only that, but we have also oh, read okay. that he created the beasts of the earth after his kind, right. meaning animal right. after animal, cow after cow, sheep after sheep, and so on and so forth. So how did, how did man come from animal? It makes absolutely no sense, but yes, this is what is being taught. This is why there is so much confusion. This is why there is so much darkness. Right, and even in that, that same scripture in verse 26, it says that uh, God gave man dominion over the beast. So if you have dominion over the beast, how can you subject yourself and come from them? So it, it really is it's, it's crazy. Furthermore, it is like if you insist in, in believing that you have uh, you've evolved from an animal, sooner or later you're going to start acting like an animal. Then what's going to happen? Who are you, who are you going to blame? Right. Are you, you have to blame your parents, which would be the cats and the dogs and God knows what else. <laughs> exactly. You know? I, I do want to touch on two points that you, you brought up in the beginning, Michael. One, uh, you mentioned uh, the spirit of truth being the principle of, of freedom, uh, which is very important. And, and in John, we talked about how uh, Jesus was talking to the Israelite um, as far as, you know, keeping the commandments, and, and that's our way to truth. And I think it's a good point to make and understand is that, you know, if the Israelite doesn't um, subject himself to the principle of truth to achieve freedom, there can be no freedom for anyone else. So it is first through the gates of Israel that the principles of truth come forth and then freedom also. So I think that's, that's very important to be aware of. We also see this played out with Moses um, beginning when he first was introduced to the God of Israel. And God told Moses to keep a feast, um, to keep his laws, his statutes and commandments and go keep this feast. And it was this feast that led the children of Israel out of captivity in the great exodus. You know, that's an interesting point you bring up, Avery, because I, I always wondered why, you know, my people, the black people here in America, always tend to um, uh, revel and, and want to be Egypt. And I just, I never really got it, because when you look back to the scriptures, you see that the Egyptians were the enemy of God's people. And you see the bondage that it was all about for God's people. So I, I just could never understand why, why our people would kind of hold on to that. 
I guess a people that are living in captivity have lost their way will hold on to anything that is thrown to them. It's, it's a very important point that you make earlier, Donald, because, you know, again, all that we are trying to do, and, and, and let me just say this point, I make this point before I forget. As Israelites, it is, our, it is part of our responsibility to present an alternative to any philosophical speculation that embraces the spirit of bondage and thereby attempts to weaken or corrupt the human spirit. Therefore, it is important to establish up front that we do not seek to remove or erase any opinion or expression that may be contrary to ours. Our hope is only to place our Israelite opinion next to the opposition so that all those who are looking or seeking the truth may freely choose. And this is, this is, is very significant because a lot of folks might think we are trying to, ch um, to erase, or some people, they just don't know how to let their own ideas stand on, on their merit, rather than trying to erase what was spoken or what was documented before. Good, bad, or indifferent. We are not like that. Talk whatever you have to talk. We will come forward and put forth our ideas, and then we will see which idea is better, which is stronger, which makes more sense. And this is exactly how it was in the garden. God put Adam in the garden with both good and evil. And he told him to obey him. He gave him instructions. So it was both good and evil. So I'm 100% agree with you, Michael, on, on that point. Yes, and you know, like a lot of folks still have an issue with us being referring to ourselves as Israel. When we've made that point again indirectly tonight, because as Donald was saying, and... Um, if the children of slave of Israel are indeed the children of slavery, then how could there be freedom in the world? And and we know that there is no freedom. Everyone is catching hell the same way we're catching hell. Right. So if we were f totally free, then we others will see that there is an alternative and try to find a way around this issue that we call uh, bondage today. Now, I want to confirm or wrap up this point, this introductory point, by going to the book of John, John 17, and I'll read to verse 9, and then 14 through 20. Verse 9 states, and this again is, is Christ Jesus speaking. He says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me for they are thine. Mm -hmm. So Jesus Christ is praying to his Father, the God of Israel, and he is saying very explicitly that he does not pray for the world. That's right. He's only praying for Israel. He says, I've given them thy word. So you have to ask yourself then, who is this Jesus that everybody claims loved the whole world? And here he is saying explicitly he's only praying for Israel. And he said in verse 14, I have given them thy word. Why is it only Israel that is getting the word, which is the truth? And the world hath hated them. Now that sounds more like it. Mm -hmm. Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So as you can see, this Christ Jesus has already attained or is on the path to freedom. Uh, or he is freedom. He is bringing that freedom to us. Right. I pray not, in verse 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. And ev if to keep them from evil, meaning to keep the Israelites from evil, is to grant them freedom. Because where there is evil, there is sin, and where there is sin, there is bondage. Mm -hmm. But where you are shielded from it, then you have freedom. All I'm trying to, to explain are the steps that are required to obtain this freedom. Verse 16 continues, They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So, again, the point that is being made here is explicitly uh, confirming my introductory statement. Right, the truth. The it's truth. the principle and it's given to Israel. Mm -hmm. Exactly. 
And in this 18th verse, it says, As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for so what is he saying? The same reason that he came, we come in. That's why this broadcast is live tonight. Exactly. Because we are try he came to share with us the the steps to freedom, and we are now sharing with the world the steps to freedom. Verse nineteen says, And as for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone. Now, here is the point when I said earlier that the good news is that the gates of the Israelites, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. So the word was given to us, Israel, and we will give it to you. And that's the way it was established, not by us, by the creator himself. And there, this is nothing, or there is nothing that anyone can do to change that that yeah. process. So the opportunity is open to anyone that is again willing to submit to the principles of truth. That's right. Now, according to truth and common sense, therefore, the concept of human freedom would be best taught by ones whose foundation is built on the laws of life. In other words, every and anyone are not allowed to teach this doctrine. Remember, uh, Jesus didn't say that, okay, you can come into the nation, the Israelite nation, and set up your own philosophy. He didn't say, now you can start Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Freemasonry, Hinduism, whatever. He didn't say any of that. He is saying that you come in, you sit down, you learn and you follow accordingly. Then we become one. Mm -hmm. That's the principle. So uh, uh, using that concept, the teachers of this uh, uh, concept of freedom would be the children of Israel, one on whose foundation is built the laws of life, who are indeed the laws of, or which are indeed the laws of freedom. The laws of life are indeed the laws of freedom. As we have already demonstrated, there is only one source for this very unique teaching, and that is our Israelite forefathers, Moses and the prophets, the servants of the Most High God of Israel. Anything else would be vanity, to say the least. Now, other people may speculate or do whatever is pleasing to them, but as for us, as Israelites, we must look to the wisdom of our forefathers, because to disobey our foreparents is to sow the seeds of our own bondage and disobedience. But yet, some people may ask, how can we use the term servant and freedom in the same sentence? The answer is quite simple. To be a servant of the Most High God of Israel is one of the highest honors that any human can attain. The very act of breathing, for instance, is to submit in a general way to the Most High God of Israel. So why not use the same breath to attain your greatest potential? So it is not like a servant is used as man would use a servant, <coughs> as a very demeaning um, status. Here, <coughs> servant is a lofty status, right. a very exalted status. I mean, not only that, when we look to the scriptures, uh, we also see that um, Israel is referred to as the children. You know, God is our father. So there's still a special relationship even outside of the, you know, as you mentioned, the, the servitude or the obedience uh, to his law, statutes, and commandments. But there's still that father-child relationship there as well. Exactly. So on that point of father and, and son, because, see, that is the ultimate uh, freedom is to move from bondage to sons family. and daughters family. Yeah. right, mm -hmm. of the Most High God. So we as human beings, we are not left to float around in space like uh, pieces of you know space de debris, but we are given an excellent home mm -hmm. called Earth. W -W -W Here we have all the comforts life. of a good life, including gravity, the ability to grow from an embryo to an adult, uh, we have sunlight and the nighttime, 
-hmm. We have oxygen, water, laws of life, food, even clothing. Mm -hmm. So who created all these comforts of life? Was it not the God of Israel? Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed, it was the God of Israel. Hence, freedom and understanding should go together. One without the other puts us at a severe disadvantage because it proves that we are all born in bondage. And being in bondage, we can no longer claim to be free. But we must seek that freedom, beginning with the teaching of Moses and the prophets. Freedom must begin with truth, right. just to reiterate. And includes identity, it includes responsibility, it includes justice, it includes judgment, it includes dignity, understanding, all of those things. So right. it's, a, it's a very serious and very lofty principle right. to entertain. And, and those are some great um, descriptions of, of freedom. You know, the one that I wanted to bring out uh, for sure is, is identity, because if we think about, you know, even our forefathers who were in, in captivity here in the Americas, the first thing that was stripped from them was their identity. And we can see how that enslaved them, because uh, once that was taken, they began to be uh, followers of those that were oppressing them. And, and that's, to me, the worst condition that you can be in, to follow those who are oppressing you and have stripped you of all that you know and all that you are. Especially when you have been, um, when you have been called to teach. Mm -hmm. And um, I would like to read a scripture that's very near and dear to my heart, being that I'm a teacher in the public school system, and that is Matthew 28. Because Michael talked about the truth that begins with truth and how this truth was given to Israel. And we even see that Paul, when he went out among the Gentiles, he had to come in with the doctrine. He came and spoke about the, the doctrine of Israel and had to feed the uh, Gentiles and kind of educate them on what the truth was. But I would just like to read a little bit um, from the book of Matthew 28, where Jesus has commissioned Israelites to go out and teach all nations. Let's read a little bit of that. Matthew 28, verse 19. And it reads, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So here we see Jesus, an Israelite, who was given the truth from his father, the God of Israel, given the uh, commissioning. Same thing as teachers in the public school system. We have been commissioned by the state. This is the same concept. Jesus is commissioning the Israelites with truth to go out and teach all nations. Not for anyone to come up with their own philosophy, but for the Israelites to teach. Right. And it, I think it, again, goes back to the principal point that we started with, that there can be no freedom for the worst of the world if the Israelite is not doing what they are supposed to do. If they're not going out teaching the principles of truth, the world will not know. Exactly. Now, let us look at this concept of freedom from uh, a more biological point of view, because it is not only the scriptural point of view, but we go into all different fields as well. The human brain of a child is practically empty of understanding. Mm -hmm. And we know this because a child, when uh, you know he or she is born, unlike the brain of a bird or, or another animal, a child must go through several years of, of learning, which means that everything that is learned, the brain is like a sponge and it soaks up and it then expands. Whereas the birds and the animals, they come with a predetermined um, uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. Most animals begin to walk within hours of their birth. Right. This means that the humans are creatures of learning and reason, rather than being programmed like the animals and the birds. Hence, true freedom is having the ability to learn and reason based on truth, keeping in mind that every decision has consequences. So we have the ability to learn anything we want to learn. But if we want to be free, 
we've got to follow the course of freedom because as we will see later in this broadcast there are two sets of laws one that leads to freedom and one that leads to bondage and the choice is ours whichever we have the freedom so to speak to take whichever course we so desire but if you want to have that freedom the ultimate freedom then you need to follow the instructions of the Israelites now uh, most people today when they talk about freedom they'll talk about political freedom they'll talk about social freedom the freedom to uh, freedom of speech and so on and so forth but we're saying that if you have that ultimate freedom then all these oh, other um, minuscule freedoms if you could call them that would be a foregone conclusion mm -hmm. you wouldn't have to demonstrate for freedom to vote or freedom to of speech or mm -hmm. whatever right. these would be a matter of, of, of course mm -hmm. but now you could see that we're climbing from um, the depths of despair and we have to understand what it is that we need to do in order to attain success and not repeat the mistakes as before freedom then is the power to resist the lie in favor of the truth it is the ability to display the difference between holy and unholy between clean and unclean freedom is a show of jet of gratitude to our creator the God of Israel by obedience to his laws statutes and judgments freedom is living a long healthy righteous life and teaching your children to do the same this is what freedom means to me and this is what I hope and pray everyone would embrace so that we can all come to the fullness of what life is all about now yeah, I just want to touch bases um, you mentioned that freedom is the power to resist the lie in favor of the truth Yes. And it's so important because we touched a little bit of, on Taoism and the, the philosophy that we all came from, animals. Um, the point I want to make here is that there is, a, there is a fundamental difference between the truth, what is truth, truthful, and what is factual. Facts can change. Today I'm 21, tomorrow I'll be 22. Um, the truth, however, comes from the almighty God. You know, that comes from God and it's everlasting. So we're not dealing with the factual. And so often when we see scientists and they, they talk, they're talking from a factual perspective. Um, but we really have to understand that this freedom requires truth. Very good so point. perfect because, you know, in, in the world of science, one week a planet is there and the next week it's not there, you know. Very good but, but the law is, is, is forever from beginning. It's everlasting. Now, Donna, do you have... Uh, any other points that you wanted to stress concerning freedom? Well, I mean, for me, to, when I look at you know the condition of of, of our, our world today, I I think that in order for folks to uh, begin to walk the path of freedom or the course of freedom, there will there there has to be a process of thinking differently. Yes. Um, and sometimes uh, it takes a lot of strength and courage to do that because when you think differently you're going against the grain and you're not the most popular and it's going to be very few mm -hmm. um, so um, you know it, it has to be something inside of you that is desiring to walk the path of truth and to be able to see the benefits of following the principles of God and what it not only offers to yourself, but to your children and, and future generations. Um, again, it, it, it's, it, it's not something that everybody will be doing, and, and it really causes you to think differently. I, I often think, I don't know um, if, if anyone's familiar with uh, the, the, the fencing for, for animals. There's an invisible fence, if you will, that people use to, to kind of keep their dogs in the yard. And when I first saw that, it was so amazing to me because I thought about um, again, my people enslaved over those 400 years, how we were programmed to stay within that box mm -hmm. and not go outside of it, even when the chains were loosed. So uh, when Israel came along, I am so thankful and glad that I was able to break out of that, to think differently and embrace the principles of truth, hence 
be on the pathway of freedom. Excellent. It, it's something that you said also leads me to my next point with regards to popularity and it is a it has to do with freedom or vanity and the scripture that I'm going to read that to illustrate this point is Jeremiah 10. I'll read the first uh, eight verses and we begin by saying uh, hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you O house of Israel. Again these scriptures are only for Israel. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the ways of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the custom of the people w are vain. W w for one cutteth the tree out of the forest, com. the work of the hands of the workmen with the nets. They deck it with silver and with gold, and fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. Uh, Christmas tree? Sounds like a Christmas <laughs> sounds tree. Sounds pretty familiar, yeah. And and this is why we're talking, as Donna made the point, about popularity. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves this whole thing. But let's continue. Verse 5. They are upright as the palm tree. They speak not. They must needs be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Who would not fear thee, O King of nations? For to thee doth it appertain, for as much as among all the wise men of the nations, and in all the kingdoms, all their kingdoms, there is none like unto thee. But they are altogether brutish and foolish. Mm -hmm. The stop is the doctrine of vanities. So when we talk about being unpopular, you know, we all know as Israelites how that is. But I think it's, it's more of an envy than an unpopularity because I think everybody wants to be Israel, which is good because I would love to call the entire world my brother and sister. <laughs> but I think that, that's the part that some people have a problem with. They may want to be Israel, but when I say, oh, how you doing, brother? Oh, how you doing, sister? Then they look at me and they look at them and they think, well, gee, we don't look alike, so something ain't right. And then they start the resentment and all the other foolishness. But here, Jeremiah is dis describing the vanity that leads to bondage rather than freedom. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of this vanity played out today. It's vanity, it's deception. I mean, th these are the same people that are talking about freedom. But yet, as you will see, they're cutting down these trees, as Jeremiah described them, and transporting them to their home, mm -hmm. fastening them, them down to the, that they fall, that not, and then decking them out with silver and gold, and then they put gifts under them so that you have to bow down to the tree exactly. to get the gifts. And they're talking about freedom when really the doctrine that they're talking, or they're, they're, they're describing or presenting is, as Jeremiah said, altogether brutish and foolish. A doctrine of vanities, not freedom. So we have to explain to the world then that you cannot have it both ways. You cannot be shouting freedom on the one hand and be cutting down these trees and taking them home and decking them with silver and gold and putting gifts under them. Mm -hmm. it, it makes absolutely no sense. And what you're suggesting or telling everybody is, look at me, I'm the biggest heathen in town. Mm -hmm. you know. And it doesn't matter um, what they say about us. We're going to stay on the side of the God of Israel because we've been called to fulfill a certain obligation and responsibility. And he is a God of freedom, mm -hmm. a God of the living, and therefore we have to support that doctrine, not a doctrine of vanity. Donna made a very excellent point when she talked about thinking differently. And um, this is a very integral step in, the, in, in our freedom. And I think about Harriet Tubman. She mentioned 
that she would have been able to save so many other slaves had they realized that their fate was not to be a slave. And I thought that was so interesting, thinking differently. The slave master taught the slave his customs and his traditions. But now that we call ourselves free, should we continue to embrace the customs and the traditions of the slave master? Um, that's a question that we have to answer. Well, you, you know, the scripture said, and, and it's a very good quest question you're posing, that you can't serve two masters. That's true. Because either you're going to, you know, take a liking to one and hate the other, or vice versa. So it creates an atmosphere for confusion, and that is what we're trying to avoid. We're trying to be very specific, and we're not saying that everything that we talk about tonight is going to be easily understood, but that's where the questions come in, not questions from trying to, a lot of people pose uh, more or less um, what they may consider a trick question, but I say, first understand what it is that we're saying, and then pose a question, whether you for or against, it doesn't matter. But don't try to uh, be sly about it, because you end up making yourself look foolish in the end. But the question then is, you know, should we continue to lead, or should we continue to follow? Or should it uh, should be the other way around? Should we continue to follow, or should we start to lead? Right. And I say, when you're at the bottom, as most well, of us are, go. what have you got to lose? <laughs> <laughs> right. And if you've been following all these last 400 years, and you're still it's at the not bottom. It's working for you, right? <laughs> Time to try something new. Let's try something different. Yeah. You know, let's try a different way of thinking. And and it, 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 it's not a black-white situation. You know, those at the top may not necessarily be doing the right thing either. But maybe, you know, some people find that if they spit, it turns to gold. Other people will find that if they spit, they get arrested for littering. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so it all depends on the circumstances, I guess. Um, so the, the moral of the story is maybe not to spit. Maybe because... Not. A goal may not necessarily be all that good for you, depending on the circumstances. Yeah, I I, mean, I think ultimately what we're saying is that the the the, the path, or if you were out there today saying, how can I make that step towards freedom? We're saying to start with the truth. And um, Avery mentioned back in the garden um, how there there's always going to be uh, the truth or the lie. You have that freedom, if you will, to choose <laughs> which way you're going to go. Um, both components are always going to be there, and um, but what we're saying is to think think differently and 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 walk the path of truth, and that starts with the doctrine of Israel. It's a very important point because a lot of people, when they talk about freedom, there is a sense of total um, looseness. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the only way I can Whatever describe it. it free will or whatever you want to do what what you want exactly yeah. there's there are no restrictions mm -hmm. there is no discipline unbridled freedom mm -hmm. so to speak but that really isn't freedom that that is lawlessness exactly when you think about it because think about I mean we talked about it earlier and I know we, we probably at the beginning didn't get into a lot of detail but when the first man and woman were, were created they were not created in outer space, as we said. They had lush green mm -hmm. garden. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They had, you know, all the comforts of Earth. They did not even have to work, you know, until they started to do things that they were not supposed to do, or maybe, you know, and then they went downhill at that point. So I, I just wanted to bring up a point because we talked about um, some folks' idea of freedom is lawlessness, but as you mentioned, if we go into detail in Genesis, the Creator had an order to everything that He did from in the first seven exactly. days. So how can we as man say that freedom is without order when the Creator had, had order? Mm -hmm. A better word than order is, is is law. Exactly. It is law. So we see that in the beginning that there was a law and that the Creator gave this law. And that as long as, you know, the first man and woman followed that law, they were in freedom. Exactly. It was only when they broke the law that they became in bondage. 
this is and this is something that you know is some people find a little bit much to swallow and I don't know why because you know I mean if, if you look at some of the corporations today they have all of these wonderful inventions and every one of these inventions come with a manual some better than others <laughs> and we don't call it a law but that's really what it is. It is. It's, it's, yeah. it's kind of a right. guideline for yeah. us to get the, the best use out of that these products. I, exactly. And when we tend to violate those principles, yeah. guess what? Um, yeah. We have all kinds of issues. That yeah. computer is not going to work. That iPhone is not going to work. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever. So we have to learn to understand that, or try to appreciate, I should say, that the creator has certain methods that he is trying to employ and try to, through us right. so that we could get the most out of life by following the principles that he's laid down. I mean, who knows best about a man and or a woman and how they should function than the one who made them? Exactly. exactly. And that's all that we're trying to prove, all that we're trying to okay. establish. And in order for us to get back, look, if, if your body calls for a certain way of eating, then, you know, we have to follow certain principles. Mm -hmm. You know, there are certain foods I can't eat. Mm -hmm. I don't get mad because other people are eating them. You know, <laughs> ice cream, for instance. That messes with my stomach. Right? Doesn't work for me. You know, I would hate to, to <laughs> tell you what would happen, but it may not be too pleasant. Well, too but nevertheless, uh, you know, that's just the way it is. I'd like to move on by talking about an appeal for freedom. How do we gain? What steps can we take? And this point leads me to Psalms 51. I'm just going to read the first 12 verses. It says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. So right away, here is this Israelite appealing to the God of Israel for mercy. And and asking the God of Israel to remove his transgressions, mm -hmm. to remove that from, from his heart. The second verse says, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Again, the same appeal. And, but here's the deal. That's his first uh, approach. Now he says, For I acknowledge my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Very significant. You know, if you've done wrong, go ahead. Acknowledge you've done wrong. Mm -hmm. Then you seek forgiveness. I ask for mercy. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and declare when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part, Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Right spirit. Cast me not away in thy, from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. So notice we're moving from a spirit of bondage to a spirit that's right, holy, and free. Mm -hmm. See? We go on now from the bondage to freedom. But, you know, the beginning of that verse, it demonstrates humility. Exactly. So to me, that that's one of the first steps. Exactly. It's the beginning, then, of freedom. Freedom. Is humility. Exactly. Uh, see, so there are steps. There is a process. The the, the the Israelite also stated that in sin did my mother conceive me. In sin. Well, if we are shapen in iniquity and conceived in sin, well, then from the time we take our first breath, we should be, if we are raised properly, <laughs> we should be walking towards freedom. Exactly. You know, not heaping up more sin. And J 
just to make a point about sin, the scriptures tell us that sin is transgression against the law. So here we are again, back to the law, back to this truth that begins with the God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now, let us move to another point and one of my uh, favorite scriptures. How do we, how can we be transformed by this freedom? or through this freedom, what type of transformation would this freedom entail or allow? And I, for that, for the answer to that question, I'm going to go to Romans chapter 8. I'll read the first uh, 9 or 10 verses to get my point across. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So, you can see that there are two alternatives here. Mm -hmm. The flesh is like bondage, and the spirit is like freedom. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. A lot of people confuse that one verse right there. They say the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So there's no more law. That's not what the scripture is saying. The scripture is simply stating that there are two different sets of laws. Mm -hmm. One that is uh, engenders life and one that leads to sin and death. Mm -hmm. Three, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sended his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. So what the law, where the law was weak, if you will, it was strengthened through the coming of the Christ. Mm -hmm. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. The righteousness of the law. So again is confirming the law, mm -hmm. right? It, and, that, and that we may demonstrate that righteousness. It goes back to what you are saying about being in the world but not of the world. Amen. Mm -hmm. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Again, two different laws. One for the flesh, one for the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and mm -hmm. peace, mm -hmm. meaning freedom. If you're focusing solely on the flesh, well, eventually you're going to grow old, and that flesh is going Gone. to die. Right. And it's no more. But if your focus is on the spirit, meaning the spirit of truth, we can notice there's a difference, the big S, okay, then you're going to be leaning towards peace, towards life, uh, that is everlasting life, mm -hmm. towards freedom. Seven, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be so this whole thing about the the flesh is the foundation but you are expected to aspire towards a higher calling mm -hmm. to move from the carnal to the spiritual mm -hmm. to move from the flesh towards freedom so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God because the flesh is enmity meaning opposing hating the ways of God. But ye that ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man hath not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, and the spirit is life because of righteousness. Now this may sound a little bit confusion when it says if Christ be in you, the body is dead. If Christ be in, in you, then you're no longer going flesh. after the flesh. Right. You Now you're driven strictly by, the, by spirit. the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And this is, is so, uh, the precedent for this is very clear. It, it is a true freedom, if you will, when Abram was transferred to or transformed w -W -W to Abraham, real life nation when Jacob com. was transformed to Israel. Israel. And of course, Jesus to the Christ, or to Christ Jesus. So 
this spiritual transformation then is the fullest expression of freedom or one of the higher advances if you will and we all have to go through that process in order to attain the heights of freedom and this is what um, Romans 8 what Paul is talking about in this in this scripture any comments no comments all right well let us let us move on to um, the fact that only the sons of God can can really indeed be free the sons of God who are indeed the children of Israel and for this I'm going to read Galatians chapter 4 and we'll, we'll read 1 through 7 now I say that the heir as long as he is a child differeth nothing from a servant though he be lord of all the heir is considered to be a child but yet a child with power mm -hmm. okay but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father even so we when we were children were in bondage under the elements of the world but when the fullness of the time was come God sent forth his son and made a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons now we pause for a moment there because now it's almost like we've come full circle from where we started we started out talking at the beginning about John 14 Jesus saying if you love me keep my commandments and I will send you a comforter whom the world cannot receive and then we say Jesus in verse in, in John 17 talking about the fact that he's praying for Israel and not for the world mm -hmm. and now we know or we've established in the process of this broadcast that Israel or the Israelites are indeed the children of God exclusively sons and daughters of the Most High Paul then is suggesting that yes we're ears uh, but we differ nothing from a servant though we be Lord of all or when the time comes that we will be at that point we're under tutors and governors mm -hmm. until the time appointed what we're suggesting is that that time is close at hand mm -hmm. and it is time that we get up and lead so to speak because he says when the fullness of the time was come God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons so it is through this Christ the Son of God that we are able to claim this adoption mm -hmm. right and because we have or to demonstrate that we have it that we have the adoption now we return to implore or to reason with others that they too should come home with us or if you've never been home come and let me introduce you to my father. my father mm -hmm. so that you too may receive yeah. our an, an opportunity or that um, that privilege notice it's not given to everybody it's only to the Israelite so if you want to be my brother or my sister then you too must come home to Israel or at least enter enter at the gate of Israel verse 6 he says and because ye are sons sons of God God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying Abba Father so now that we are sons and daughters of the most high God of Israel we have that special privilege where we can reach out with hands outstretched and cry out to our father by name mm -hmm. wherefore Thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God 
through Christ. This is the same example that Jesus had to follow. He went from in a manger, mm -hmm. in the stable with animals, all the way through to the Christ. Right? And we could, we're not saying that we are, we are going to be Christ, but we could come as far as is allowed for us to go through our service to God because each one of us has a purpose, has a reason for being, and we have to explore that to the fullest so that uh, through our leadership role mm -hmm. in, in this uh, understanding. So with that, I think we have come full circle. We've come all the way from uh, children of bondage, children of slavery, children of the captivity, onto children of freedom, where we've returned uh, to the plantation, if you will, to bring home others who are still experiencing difficulties in their, um, in their, in, in their depth of bondage. So are there any other comments that uh, that you want to, in, in concluding, that you want to bring forward? I just would like to sum it up by what Jesus said. He said that the truth will make you free. And it, we have established that the truth begins with the God of Israel. And if you want to establish a, a relationship with my father who is king, then you must come through the gates of the kingdom. And we know that kingdom to be Israel. And for me, one of my, my, my favorite uh, scriptures that sums it all up for, for our purpose of being um, is Ecclesiastics 12.13. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And what we're saying here tonight is that freedom is serving the almighty God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Thank you. So to conclude then, it is very significant that they can be, that we understand that there can be no freedom well, without the Israelite. Uh, if the Israelite is in bondage, then the world too is in bondage because we are supposed to be the ones that should go forth and teach this freedom, teach the concept of freedom. We've learned tonight that freedom is not uh, a simple matter, but it is a matter worth uh, pursuing because for the first time a lot of people are understanding that we were born in bondage mm -hmm. and that bondage what people call freedom is really not freedom but actually bondage mm -hmm. and that bondage is is, is something that um, can be overcome if we only understood the pathway the difference uh, between bondage and freedom is one is falling and the other is leading. Mm -hmm. uh, to lead takes a lot of courage, especially in a day in a day and age where it is convenient to follow. And I'm not saying that it is not going to be it is not easy. They have uh, uh, freedom has its challenges, or shall we say, freedom has its price, uh, because. It is the power, as we said earlier, to resist the lie in favor of the truth. Now, when you are offered uh, all the wonderful gifts at Christmas time, how are you going to say no? You know, um, I was asked by a lady recently, uh, she was saying to me, and, um, what am I doing for Thanksgiving? I said, well, I'll, I'll be out bike riding. What you doing? <laughs> And she said, what about your wife? Um, didn't, wasn't she born in the South? Isn't she going to miss it? I said to her, looked her straight in the eye. I said, when you're a child, you behave as a child. When you become an adult, you put away childish things mm -hmm. and act responsibly. And obviously she, she didn't understand that or she didn't like it. But either way, all I'm saying is I'm standing up for my freedom. But I was very careful not to insult her or put her down in any way because she's my friend. So I'd like to thank you for listening and I hope that you've listened as a friend and I want to invite you to join us again next week the same time and same place. For now, we wish you good night.